Okay, so in this video, I am going to talk to you about natural methods of transformation. This is the second video on bacterial transformation. If you haven't already watched the first video on the basic principles of transformation and competence, go on and watch it first as many concepts in this current video depends on the knowledge from the last video. The natural method of transformation is a very complex process. So it contains lots of steps. I shall include only the important points. So make sure you don't miss any part of this video. As you already know from the previous video that transformation occurs in a competent cell. To undergo competence, bacteria needs to activate lots of genes. For example, in Bacillus subtilis, the bacteria activates about 40 genes to undergo competence as well as transformation. So let's describe the steps of natural method of transformation. During competence, the bacteria activates various genes that produces various proteins in its cytoplasm as well as in its cell surface. For example, in case of a gram-positive bacteria in this example, the cell surface contains cell wall as well as the cytoplasmic membrane. There are production of various proteins that then goes and reside on the cell surface. One of them is DNA receptor. This is the chromosomal DNA of the bacteria. It is a double-stranded circular DNA. When this competent bacteria encounters an extracellular double-stranded DNA segment, it can undergo transformation. So in the very next step, the double-stranded extracellular DNA goes and attaches with the cell surface receptor. So it goes and binds with the cell surface receptor. Now some of these receptors contain nucleus activity which cleaves one of the strands of the extracellular double stranded DNA. So one of the strands get fragmented and only a single strand can enter within the bacterial cell. In the step that follows, the single stranded DNA then goes and binds with some of the cytoplasm proteins. So this is the single stranded DNA that just entered within the cell and it now binds with some cytoplasmic proteins. One of them is REC-A, REC REC-A. This REC stands for recombinant because this type of proteins, that is rec recombinant proteins, they help in the recombination. The REC-A proteins also help in the DNA repair. So if you remember from the previous lecture, the transformation process is related to bacterial survival. So this is another evidence to its support that these REC-A proteins, which also helps in the DNA repair, helps in the process of transformation in the bacteria. What the REC-A does, it binds with the single stranded DNA and forms a filamentous structure that then scans throughout the length of the bacterial chromosome to find some homologous region. Now if you ask what is a homologous region, then let me explain. If this is the single stranded DNA that just entered within the bacterial cell and this is one of the strands of the double stranded chromosomal DNA of the bacteria, then if any part of the single stranded DNA contains the same sequence of nucleotides that is present in the strands of bacterial chromosomal DNA, then these two segments will be called homologous segments. For example, if the single stranded DNA contains a segment of A, A, G, T, C, etc., and the bacterial chromosomal DNA, uh, one of its strands also contains A, A, G, T, C, etc., that is the same sequence of nucleotides in both of these parts, then these two segments will be called homologous segments. So what REC A does is that it finds out this homologous region between these two sets of DNA and it cleaves the DNA at those points of homology. It looks something like this. The double stranded chromosomal DNA will have a cleaved segment in one of its strands and this is the single stranded DNA 
bound to the decay protein. In the very next step, the single-stranded DNA will bind to the clip part and thus the extracellular DNA gets incorporated within the bacterial chromosome. Now if you ask me what is the need of this incorporation within the bacterial chromosome? Can't the extracellular DNA stay in the cytoplasm of the bacteria? Well the answer will be no. It will not be an effective method. So let me explain. If this is the bacterial cell, uh, let me put the same color as before. If this is the bacterial cell and this is the bacterial chromosome, this is the extracellular DNA, then as you can notice, this extracellular DNA is covalently open in both, both of its ends, while this chromosomal DNA is covalently closed. Another example of covalently closed DNA segment is plasmids. They are covalently closed, that is, they cannot bind new nucleotides at any of their ends. They don't have any end because they are circular. But this linear DNA is covalently open. So this DNA are the prime target of some of the enzymes known as exonuclease. This Exonuclease enzymes are found in the cytoplasm of the bacteria. These are exonucleases. They cleave the DNA from both the ends and thus they destroy the DNA that is covalently open. This is one of the reasons the bacteria have to incorporate the DNA segment within their own chromosome. This is also the explanation why we use a plasmid commonly during the process of artificial transformation. That is when we provide the extracellular DNA to the bacteria to perform the transformation process. Another reason is that for the extracellular DNA to produce proteins, it has to have a promoter region. Now the extracellular DNA might not always have a promoter region, but this chromosomal DNA of the bacteria have a promoter region. So if this is the promoter region. Now, if the extracellular DNA gets incorporated within the bacterial chromosome, it can use the bacterial promoter region. This is another reason why the extracellular DNA needs to be incorporated within the bacterial chromosome. Now, incorporation of the extracellular DNA doesn't always mean a successful transformation. So, for a successful transformation to occur, the bacteria has to be in two of the four following situations. So this is the bacterial chromosomal DNA. Now the newly incorporated DNA segment is different from the DNA strand that is present in its complementary position. So this part of the DNA produces a mismatch. which might trigger a mismatch repair. So once the bacteria triggers the mismatch repair, the machinery of the mismatch repair comes and they cleave one of the mismatched strands within the bacterial chromosome. So it might cleave the newly incorporated bacterial strand or it might cleave the previous bacterial strand. Now if the newly incorporated DNA strand is removed, then the bacteria will return into its previous chromosomal structure. That is this structure. But if the mismatch repair removes the previous strand, then it will produce a complementary strand that is a co copy of the newly incorporated DNA strand. So the final result will look like this. Now there can be another situation in which there is no mismatch repair where the bacterial cell will safely undergo cell division and produce two daughter cells. One of these daughter cells will contain one of the strands of the bacterial chromosome. 
so one of the bacterial cell will have the strands that contain the newly incorporated DNA while another daughter cell will contain the previous segment of the DNA and in the process of replication the bacteria will synthesize its complementary strands so as you can see only in these two situations this one and this one that the bacteria will be able to successfully incorporate the DNA that is the extracellular DNA within their own genetic material so these are the two instances of successful transformation in the bacteria sorry for the sound it is boarding heavily outside so let's focus on the topic so to have a successful transformation the bacteria has to fulfill all of the following criteria number one it has to be competent number two it has to take up the DNA segment and number three it has to retain the DNA segment by incorporating it within its own chromosomal DNA so a very few bacteria in a bacterial colony can become competent and of those competent bacteria only a small percentage can take up the DNA and among those percentage as you have seen only in two situations that they can retain the DNA so a successful transformation is a relatively rare phenomena when the natural method of transformation is involved so one very small detail among the gram positive and gram negative bacterial transformation is that the gram negative bacteria contains an outer membrane above its cell wall and its cytoplasmic membrane so the extracellular DNA has to cross the outer membrane and after which it can cross the cell wall and the cytoplasmic membrane in the same process as in gram positive bacteria so to facilitate the transformation the gram negative bacteria produce certain proteins called secreting channels and one of them is for example PILQ or PILQ however you want to pronounce which helps the extracellular DNA to pass through the outer membrane so one misconception uh, that is very common among the people is that the bacterial cell can take up only very small fragment of the DNA during the transformation which is of course not true the bacteria can take a very large segment of the DNA and even of the size of its own chromosomal material so we can also we can also increase the size of the DNA that can be taken up by using the method of artificial transformation which we will discuss in the next lecture so that was all about the natural method of transformation so if you found this video helpful please like this video and also subscribe so that you don't miss any future update if you have any question regarding this topic or any other topic related to biology you can ask them in the comment section and we shall try to answer as many of them as possible also if you have any suggestions put it in the comment section down below for the links for further reading or references like research paper in this particular topic visit the description section of the video so see you in the next video thank you for watching